Oh, hey, how's it going? You waiting for the stream to start? Me too. What am I doing? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm saving the world of Teleria by recruiting the most legendary warriors from the forces of light and darkness. And I'm training them to fight together, molding them into living weapons, and assembling the greatest raiding party ever seen. I'm playing Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a premium, visually stunning fantasy RPG. And one of my favorite parts about this game is how creative you can be with your characters. There's over 500 champions to collect, but hands down, one of my favorites is the miscreated monster. It basically is like this Frankensteinian looking creature. Raid just released the Artifact Forge. You can save time and craft artifacts directly now. They also released a new advanced quest system with amazing rewards and just brought out some new champions as well. They're also developing this amazing looking Doom Tower as we speak, which I am super stoked about and I think I might name my next band Doom Tower. Yeah. The coolest part about this game is I can basically play it anytime I want to. If I'm putting my kids to bed, or I'm making a cup of coffee in the morning, or I'm supposed to be editing JHS content, it's right on my phone. I can pull it out anytime that I want to. So go to the description below after the stream and click on that. And if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver plus a free champion Light Sworn. I think we should probably make a pedal called The Light Sworn right after I start Doom Tower. These incredible treasures will be waiting for you in your inbox. Go check that after you download the thing, and I'll see you later. I've got, like, a few dungeons. i got a raid and stuff, so... Yeah. Alright, get serious, everybody. What's up? We're here on a Monday. I have Addison over here. Yo, yo, yo. Happy Monday. There's a screen that should go to Addison. <laughs> there we go. And Nick is over here. Hi. You changed shirts. I did. Wow. Are you playing uh, Raid? Yeah, I got a new reward today. What, what, tell us about what it. What'd you get? Like, I got like 7,000 silver. <clears throat> That's a big deal. It Speaking is. of silver, clons are silver. Ha. <laughs> all right, let's jump right Good into one. this. Wow. Uh, this Wasted is no time. No time at all. This is really exciting. Um, oh, one other thing. We still have these shirts, so available in the merch store. Uh, go follow Mr. Tambourine Man Official at Instagram. Um, this is the Morning Glory. Really cool shirt. I like it. I wore it on the last live stream with Roy, and we still have the Lucky Cat as well. This is by House Bear, so we're having these artists do these shirts. Pretty fun. I feel like we're really elevating our merch game for you guys. So... Here we are. Is the clown is the clown overhyped? That was the the clickbait title, and now I think we're calling it everything you need to know about the clown. And by the end of this, we'll have five or six other titles. But the point of this episode is to talk about this crazy clown phenomenon. That rhyme. Whoa. Clown phenomenon. Let's jump on the clown table over here. This is um, a lot of clowns. These are all original. So I have. These are like all these are originals. Then we have replicas. We have even DSP units like the Line 6. We have all the old JHS replicas. We have a Ninja Turtle. We have a lot of stuff here. And then we can come down to this tabletop. This is the first clone ever made. So I think it's a good control unit. I have a switcher down at my feet. If you notice, this goes green and red. Red is this and then if i hit the switcher i'm i'll have a pedal here probably and we're going to shoot some things out hear what they sound like for delay i'm using this fantastic walrus delay um it's awesome and i'm just doing like a quarter note thing morning glory because i love stacking overdrives this is kind of like not there it's just as if i had the amp up more and then i have a fox rock um, CC hybrid fuzz face. So yeah, you guys ready? Everybody excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Stoked. We're going to cover these points today or try to, and Addison's going to keep me on track because I'm exhausted, but we're going to do this. And I think the best time to do a live is when you're tired. I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, cause when you have too much energy, it could be dull. So right. when you're tired, it'll be more exciting. Basic history of the clon centaur, the clon centaur. The pedal is actually called 
the centaur, and it's by Klon. A lot of people get this wrong. I don't judge you, but we'll call, we'll talk about that later. Versions over the years. Are there different versions of the Klon? Are they different? Uh, stuff like that. What do they look like? What's the story with all that? Why the recent escalation in Klon interest? I feel like Tom broke out right now. Why all of the sudden are we seeing tons of interest in the uh, Klon? If we look at, if we look at, for instance, we did this video two years ago. It has two hundred fifty-four thousand views. Not bad for a pedal demo. It's not about the Klon, but I show the number two here, and. We have, here's living room, the myth behind the Klon. This is a newer one that's really great. I bought a $5,000 guitar pedal. Does it sound any good? That's the most perfect clickbaity thing I've ever seen. Good job. Music is winning. I love his channel. Klon Centaur, the $3,000 overdrive pedal. Four Klon style pedals. This uh, is six years ago. This is when Electro Harmonics cloned it. 1.1 million views. That's Andy there. I like his hair in this era. Really nice hair. Uh, Anderton's. This is a fantastic video. I'll reference this later. Everyone go watch this later. Um, Five Watt World. Awesome guy. He does really great work. I uh, want to collaborate with him at some point. And then you have, you know, playing a real clown for the first time. Is it really worth $4,000? So... We just have this incredible movement on the subject of the Klon Centaur. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to shoot out some things. And then we're going to try to answer, is the Klon overhyped? So are we all ready? How do you feel about this, Addison? I'm stoked. I, stoked? Uh, I have my answer to that last question, but I guess I'll save it until okay. the end of the stream. Nick, what are your thoughts here? I got hot takes. You got some hot takes? Sure. All right. Well, let's jump into some history. Pedal history a lot of you didn't know I'm a professor at Pedal History High School, so today we're going to go over um, the basic history of the Klon Centaur. I'm going to walk through it briefly. Uh, again, if you want really good detail, I'm going to do some things in the future, um, but I would go to 5 Watt World. He did a great job talking through uh, a lot of points, but this is my quick take. So Bill Finnegan is the creator of Klon Siberia, the brand. Um, and he wanted to build something besides a tube screamer with his twin. He lived in Boston. He played a lot of live music, twin reverb. Everyone was into tube screamers. This is like 89 or 90, I believe. And he got a tube screamer. The vintage ones were starting to, to go up in price. I would say in 89 or 90, vintage tube screamers probably felt like the Klon kind of feels now. Now, they're nowhere near the price points, but they were like the mojo overdrive you had to have. So he wanted to make a different pedal. He wanted something that was not a tube screamer. So he enlists the help of a friend who was at MIT. And that guy moved on out of town, but then Bill enlisted a second MIT engineer. And this guy's name was Fred Finning. So Fred Finning came on and he completed the Centaur design. There were prototypes as early as a year into this project, I believe. And Bill gives Fred Finning credit for what is the Klon Centaur and the KTR. It took four and a half years and the first one ever sold, let's do the tabletop, the first Klon ever sold, other tabletop, my bad, is this guy right here. This is actually it. Um, this was sold in 1994, serial number two. It was the first Klon ever made. Bill put the parts aside for number one. He needed to fulfill orders. He put everything for number one aside, built this first, sold this first, and it was $225. That's $395 today. That's an expensive pedal. So yeah, like we were talking about this earlier. That's like color box land. Other ex what's some other expensive pedals? Like when we get into $400 pedals, this yeah. is for 1994. This is pretty wild. Yeah. N nothing's coming to mind right away, but I, I was very surprised when you said that because you know, I think like how what was the date again? It was this, 1994. Yeah, yeah, like I I I feel like pedals that expensive would would be sort of a rarity at that time and like, you know, 
that that's pretty wild. Like it seems like it's always been a very expensive. Yeah, it, pedal. it's a brand new pedal, unknown builder. At kind of the beginning of the boutique boom. Was anybody else doing like what he was? At I that mean, time? you. So in this era, you you know you have love tone you have mike fuller you have way huge starting it's the very beginnings okay. of the the second kind of the re the the, the re-emergence of boutique okay kind cool. of like yeah that whole era so it's a fairly unique circuit it borrows from design uh elements of different things it's a hard clipper um think dod 250 distortion plus rat it, it kind of shares that clipping nature but it has some really unique things um and the MIT guy, Fred Finning, was not a guitar player, and I think that's key to how he designed the circuit. So he didn't know anything about guitar circuits or guitar pedals, and I think that's why it has some uniqueness to it. Um, custom cast enclosure. He gooped the circuit board, which is very interesting. We'll show this stuff later. There's a black epoxy all over the circuit board. Uh, it turns 9 volts into 18 internally with what's called a charge pump. I do not believe that had ever been done before, so that gives it a little more headroom. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild. I have an original box to one of mine over here. Who has the box? Da da Right no here. No big deal. Yeah. This is the box. Um, let's do this cam. So... That's an original sales receipt, and it says Richard Taylor, I think, eleven twenty nine oh one, two hundred and eighty five dollars shipped, which is bonkers. So yeah, we have the manual. We can go back to this cam. We have the manual here. Um, yeah, it's like is hand, that hand drawn? It's copied of hand drawn. Yeah. So wow. We have that. We have. Uh, the original business card, Klon William Finnegan, the phone number, info at klonsiberia.com, www.klonsiberia. Yeah, you just have, like, important notes about it, even the original little barrel connector for the power supply. So that was a $400 pedal in a cardboard box. And from that point... Uh, he made them from 94 all the way to 2009, and uh, he made 8,000 of them by hand at a card table. I think he moved around town, but he did everything himself, and he, yeah, 8,000 is not a lot of pedals, but when you think about one man and the way he was making them, that's a lot of pedals. Yeah. So I built my first yeah. Klon clone at a card table. That's true. In a shed. You built the one of the Klon replicas back in the day. That would have been oh nine, maybe something uh, like that. 10? Yeah, nine yeah almost uh, two thousand ten, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think what the people want is to hear the first yeah. Klon ever made. We should jam on it. Um, first Klon made, first Klon sold. I have no idea what it's worth. It's an interesting speculation. I got this through a situation that was good for me. I'll just say that. I didn't like have to <laughs> I didn't have to sell like plasma or anything. Right. So All right. Let's see here. I love having no signal because of the switcher. There we go. All right. So this is how I use a clone. If we look here at the control, I love it as an overdrive distortion. Also, this is here because Hulu rebooted Animaniacs. If you're out there, you know. So I like it like that. A lot of people will turn this way down and boost. So pedal off. I'm just playing the loud is more good, so clean, fendery thing. And back to on. It's a cool sound. I would, you know, I don't, I don't see what's so special about the clean sound. I mean, there's a, you know, I'm not hating on it, but I've always, and I do always keep a clone on my board. So here's the sound I like. It's really nice. Yeah. 
you said something earlier that made me happy for you. What you said oh, this might be it might be the dri- it might be the drive I've been looking for. So you're saying you care about guitar? I'm saying that it, it's a good sounding pedal. All right, let's do this. Uh, we don't know what we're playing. I'm gonna turn on a quarter note delay. Um, start up a, a beat. Big thanks to our audience here. So it's a it sounds good. It's great. If we go down here, um, I kicked in the fuzz face, so I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way here. The delay is a quarter. I already said that, but I love the Klon as a second stage overdrive. Meaning, I run in a clean amp like this, then I'll turn on a Morning Glory and leave it on. So which just sounds like I cranked my amp. It's not doing anything frequency-wise. This sounds good. And then, you know, I'll stack this on. But what I love is the fuzz face, or any fuzz, a rat, they have a scooped out middle in them. This sounds amazing. But watch when I hit the con. It's like the it's a nasally fan, it's a fantastically nasal tone that I love. So if you hear that sound, that's what I'm doing. Josh, right. I have a couple questions for yeah, you. Yeah, let's go for uh, it. A couple couple comments about the blue clon. Is this a thing? The blue clon, yeah, as real? mentioned in, uh, I believe it was, uh, we were talking about Way Huge, right? Was that? It was on an episode, was it? Yeah. Yeah. I um, can't remember which one it yeah, was. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's this, um, the conspiracy theory. Um, I don't know. Just just go watch whatever episode that was on. I can't remember. Was it, a way he- was it about Way uh, Huge? I don't, I don't remember. I just know that. There might be a flash where you see a blue yeah. clon, oh. but I'm not really allowed to talk about it. So, so this, let's. This begs the question then. Yeah. Do you have all the clons? I'm missing one clon. I discovered what? that. Uh-oh. I discovered that this week. How's it going? I don't have this pedal, and I'm gonna say that. I just have to have that pedal. That's how I feel. <laughs> oh. It seems like you feel pretty sad. Um, there. If we go to the big tabletop. Uh, we have silver, no horse, silver horse with a short, a long tail. See, the tail is long. Addison, you might have to help. Or oh, yeah. Yep, yep. But basically, you have uh, silver with no horsey, silver with a short tail, silver with a long tail. Then you have gold, no horse, gold with a short up there. And then you have gold with a long tail. And there is a gold with white font that I don't have. Dang. I'm okay. It's I thought it was a counterfeit for a while, which we'll get into. Yeah. But it looks like these are real. If you have one, hit me up. I'm not gonna beg, but you know, please hit me up. Okay, so yeah. basically then we we have the clon, it comes out. 
right? In yeah. in the mid nineties, and then we start seeing clones of these things. Uh, my question is why? Why do people start cloning it, and how do they start cloning it? Right, because we know it's gooped. Yeah, so it's gooped. Let's talk about that. So uh, 2009, we have this schematic is dropped on the internet. The community at Free Stomp Boxes, it's an online group. They uh, they did like a they put all their money together. They bought a centaur, and a guy named Martin Chittum. Chittum? Chittum? I don't know. He removed the goop and reverse engineered it. And this is the first drawn schematic of the mystery because when you opened one up, it was gooped. You'll see pictures of that later. Um, and then the, the replicas and cloning started. Now, 2009, it's important to know that he had stopped producing it at this point and the prices were starting to go through the roof, so that's why they did this. And then I released this in 2009. Um, this is the JHS replica. I did, we did a good many of these. Yeah. Um, Nick built a lot of the, I, I don't know the numbers. We actually don't know how many built we built. Quite a few. Were you, didn't, were you one of the first to do this? I Would think, you I mean, I kind of feel like you were. I think I was. That feels like one of those things, it feels weird to say, but it, it wasn't like, I wasn't trying to. I think I was just the first person stupid enough to sell one and not, like, I didn't think about, because I got some hate over it, but right. I, like, didn't. I was just like, well, you can't buy them, and that was the situation. So, I actually, I had a phone call with Bill. This is around 2009. I still lived in Mississippi. We had this phone call. He, ta- he told, told me a lot about the pedal and why he did certain things, why he put the foot switch where it is, why this happened. And and I made a vow to him. I said, hey, when you put a new one out, I, I won't sell mine. And when he put wow. the KTR out, I still haven't made one. So... I've stuck to that, uh, like I told him. I could have made a, a probably a little bit of money on a Klon replica or something, but it's it, I, it's fine. When the KTR came out, I put that on my board. I've rocked that on my board for years. So, yeah, it's fine. If you look at these, these are actual prices they're selling for. That's bonkers. This is bonkers. Seven fifty. This says um, the JHS a point for point rendition. Extremely hard to find. Very sought after. Used only. Good luck snatching one. It's it's crazy to see that we were just just making a pedal. It's so crazy that a clone is selling for almost twice the price of, of an original, original yeah. that came out. Look at this. Gosh, that's insane. Yeah. So that's uh, you know. I had that phone call. I stopped making them. The KTR comes out, and uh, this is there. There, there is now a war around late two thousand nine, I believe. There's a lot of statements about the secret diode, and no one can actually replicate it. So even though we have a schematic, Bill stated, and he told me on the phone, "Hey, I have these diodes. I've never seen them. You can make this, but it's not going to clip the same. So good luck." And that was kind of that's that deal. So let's put a JHS replica yeah. up here and let's shoot them out. So this is hopefully very very clearly this will answer the question, can you replicate a clon? Yeah, I mean we've we've gone through this like the pedal myths episode and stuff. You know, I made a joke about we've been to the moon or at least we've faked it. And we've like we have McDonald's being delivered right. to our houses now. So I think we can handle a circuit that's from the fifties. But I, I get what Bill is saying, and, uh, you know, he has a stash of a part that um, has, you know, it's it's a 1 in 3, 4A diode. That's very common. He got his from a Russian supplier, apparently, and they're supposedly a little different. And I believe that, but I, you know, how different is that sound? I, I, I don't agree that it's that different. And that's an opinion. And so... My opinion is not like gospel or anything. So here we go. Let's look at... um, Before we play this, uh, to the folks watching, while we're going to jam on this one, um, cast your vote for another one that you might see on the table. Maybe we can show the table real quick. What else do you guys want to hear? If we have time. There's so much stuff. (laughs) We'll do more than this episode. This is like, this is important. Like, just to get this out in the air. Yeah. Coconut water. I just had to have a drink. So here we go. Here's the OG. Notice red light. Now let me tune this to kind of find the parameter. Now one thing about shootouts, and I've told people over and over, 
you cannot exactly expect knobs to line up. There's a 20% tolerance in a pot, meaning here on this may need to be here on the same pedal. Like if you take two Morning Glories and put them all, there's a tolerance. There's a there's an error in part accuracy, and that's real important to know. So here's the, 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 the replica. So obviously you need to turn the volume up. See that taper is different. You just kind of set here and you get your. It's a little too dirty. I'm switching them if you if you close your eyes, everybody. Everybody close your eyes. Here okay. we go. They sound very similar. I, I can, I can tell that the pots are not perfect, but I mean, that's. I don't know how to complain about that. You were doing this to me earlier with a bunch of these on the table, and I was just yeah. like, "This is silly." Like, so it's crazy. Yeah, it is. I'm switching now. Yeah, let's jam. Yeah. A new, a new fresh beat. No pressure. New fresh beat. Create. <laughs> Make we things go. now. Somebody mute their mic. I mean, I would put a dash more gain, maybe. I, yeah, it's the same circuit. It's, yeah. It, I, Let's talk about it, it. When it's in the mix with everything, I mean, I feel like I thought I could hear a difference when you first started, but like the more you played, I just feel like it's so negligible. It, the differences are so small. It just feels like... Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me even... Let me... Hold on. So one thing you'll notice in something like this is like, how does a chug... Let's do the switcher view so people can view this. That is, I there is just no difference. So how does a full chord feel? I hear a I hear darkness a there. So, but is it, it? But pot tolerance has to be accounted for. Like if scientific method is introduced into this, right. you have to do that. Much closer. It's oh, yeah, identical. Yeah, yeah. Back to the chug. Those are identical sounds. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it's not. But and then another way to do this is so max the gains out. That means you're at full circuit potential, meaning full clipping of the secret diodes. So I know for a fact 
the diodes in here are 1N348s. One they are not from Russia. I'm pretty sure they're Chinese. These are the Russian ones. So how do these stack up? Let's see. You should hear the full potential of the clipping diode. Yeah, I, that's so crazy. So I'm um, and and try to be. Let me let me try like a high note thing, like something a little fluttery. Yeah. So which yeah. one do you guys think sounds better? <laughs> I, I. It's so it. I, the they the still don't sound you're any different. <laughs> yeah, the diode thing. So this a circuit is a circuit, and there's not magic in a circuit. That sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. A circuit is a circuit. There's no magic in a circuit. Hey. You just get the circuit, and you get it to work it. Okay. Yes. That was more like a Beastie Boys rhyme. <laughs> but so diodes have what's called a forward voltage drop. And what that means is there's a certain voltage at which when I hit my guitar, I create voltage. It's an AC voltage. So... How quickly does the diode grab? This is this is a hypothetical image for you to understand how the circuit works. The diodes grab your signal and pull them down the ground and distort it. They chop off your waveform. So you have a pretty wave. Well, it grabs it and like flattens the top off, and that's what distortion is. So germanium diodes have a really quick threshold. They clip really quickly. If you put an LED in it feels more responsive. You can beat your guitar a little bit heavier and it feels more like an amp, but a germanium diode in this configuration is gonna clip really quickly and easily. And these are just near identical. And I know I didn't buy these from Russia. Yeah. Um, so that is part of the problem with this pedal is the secret thing which shows up in the KTR later when you look at the circuit board. We've got one comment. Yeah, this... uh, Gary Davlin says, I hear about 0.0 of a dB change, 0 0.01 dB change around 19 kilohertz. So I was hearing that same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Do you guys get the joke? You didn't get yeah. the you're, you, yeah. you, My you delivery delivered was it terrible. so <laughs> no, dry. No, I was, I, was about to, I was about to add to that. Okay. Any differences you hear are usually the fact that we're sitting here on the fly. I have a camera in front of me. I'm holding a guitar, hoping it's in tune. We have to jam, and it's like, is the volume the same level? It's usually volume. A lot yeah. of pedal demos, yeah. a pedal, you're like, that pedal sounds so good. This is loud. Like, loud is more good. Yeah. Hey. And, you always and, pick the one that's loudest. That's always. the one you like the most. Louder is always better in a demo scenario. Okay, so question, yeah. then, unless you guys... Okay. No? Um, so there's different, like, over the years, we have all these different kinds, right? Yeah. So... Um, what are are there any circuit differences? Is it just cosmetic? Is it so? If we go back over here, all of these versions have cosmetic differences. I do not know who created the art. I think Bill probably did. I do not know why some have a horsey, some have a horsey with a short tail, a long tail. I I don't know. I don't know why they're silver and gold. I have no clue. But the circuit is the same, and Bill himself says that. There are there is a resistor that is not included in a latter version, but it's like it's an inaudible change. What's the so, resistor? Where is it in the it's circuit? It's just at the I believe it's at if my memory is correct, it's on the first versions there's like an input resistor. It's it's just like yeah. it's a negligible thing right. that he himself the point is he says it doesn't matter, they're all the same. Yeah. I mean that's he's stood by that for a while. Okay. Forever. So if they're all the same then, what about the KTR? Yeah. Let's go to the KTR. Let's go to the KTR. Uh, this is, to get to the KTR, we need to go to www.klon-siberia.com. So Klon is Klon Siberia. JHS Pedals is a company name. Klon Siberia is this company's name. And this is all that's on the website. You can go there right now, and it says this. This is all that's on there. And that's literally the color of the screen. As of this date, December 22nd, 2011, so this is eight, nine years ago, exactly two years after I stopped. So he stopped in 09. That's how I know that. Um, and this is around the time we talked. He stopped afterwards. He stopped accepting orders. 
Uh, there finally seems to be more and more light at the end of the tunnel with regard to a future availability of a new Klon. The design of the new unit has been completed for quite a while now. And the unit itself will be produced according to my specs detailed instructions by a very highly regarded contract manufacturing firm. OEM manufacturing is what he's talking about. A private label. The first production run is now in the process of being scheduled uh, but realistically, the soonest the new unit could be available for purchases, perhaps two months from now. Um, and it may well be a little longer than that. At some point between now and then, this site will be revised <laughs> <laughs> to include uh, a link that you'll be able to click on. Maybe it did at some point. I don't remember. Thanks for your patience. Uh, yeah, and then basically this is released. I and, remember uh, when this came out. Yeah, so... Uh, when it came out, I ordered one from uh, Guitar Sanctuary in, in McKinney, Texas. It came in, and we pulled ours and quit making them and threw the boards away and everything. I yeah. made, like, one more for Spoon. Yeah. Like, I made one replica, yeah. and we the, threw everything away. The funny thing is is that it's in the same it it's in the same size case as our clone, but the – well, it's sort of flip-flop. Like, the it's like, are the jacks mounted on top? Is that considered the top where the jacks are? Yeah, yeah. That's the top. So it's like pretty much the same size case as ours. Yeah. Even though I have replicas that you just heard, I I like this. I use it. I like the form factor. I actually like it better than long ways. And it's on mm -hmm. my board. It's just easy to deal with. Yeah. We used to mod them, which is funny. If you find that, good luck. I'm not going to explain it. It's, uh... <laughs> so let's put this down here. Um, now, if we look at this picture... Um, kindly remember the ridiculous hype that offends so many is not of my making. The thing on the side is a buffer. Always almost almost better. That means buffer on. All, almost always worse, buffer off. So this is uh, a private uh, contract manufactured clon uh, centaur that Bill had made. And the company that made these initially is uh it was rocket that made these um so when you see the archer they actually produced these for bill and they had a falling i wouldn't say it was a falling out they just didn't like working together i don't think it was like you know like nobody punched super anybody drama or, or and, and i and i think yeah as, I, as far as i know it was fine and bill seems like a really nice he was so kind to me and yeah i think he just they didn't it didn't work out so I don't know where the second run was made. I have no idea. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, here's the KTR. So let's shoot it out. Let's get it to sound um, like this one. And I like the position where I use it for a demo as well because we know we're hearing the diode. If you roll this gain off, you don't even hear the diode. So there's a, there's a really great humor in the fact of I see a lot of people saying, I hear this, the special diode. And then you look at their board, they're using it as a clean boost, and the diode's not even activated because you have to push enough gain across the threshold of the diode to even get it to clip. So if you're running your clon down here, you're not hearing a diode. So you could, t and I will do this at some point, I'll just take pliers and cut a di the diodes out of a clon to yes. prove this point. Out of a real clon. Might as well. Come on. And then... But when you're here, you really do hear it. So let's where roughly where does that happen in the? I know it's probably a little different. It in every starts. Title, but. I mean, you know, you're gonna hear it. You, you can analyze it and hear it, and you really do hear it up in here. I mean, I, I yeah. and I love the sound of the germanium cutoff. That's one thing I love about this pedal. That's cool. All right, there's our control. The red. And let's see. Okay. You want to jam on that? Let's for do a that. Let's do that. Start a sick beat, no pressure.
Somebody mute their mic. Okay, again. Yeah. So we're hearing the diode. We know the clean's the clean is simple. The clean is it's not a simple circuit. It's a brilliant circuit, but the clean is like, you know, go build a clean boost that's complicated. That diode is the secret, but we're hearing the diodes in here, so these match really well. And what we just answered is does this really sound as good as this? I still see people like, I have the KTR man just doesn't cut it. It's the same builder, the same secret part. If you open the case, it says, um, I can't remember the saying, it's something like these, the secret diodes. He made a joke in there, which is a funny, he made a funny. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. And he was so strict about quality control that um, Rocket was not good enough, apparently. I mean, this is a guy who's obsessed over the fine details. It's what I appreciate about him. So yeah, KTR. So the consensus so far is you can replicate yeah. this thing, even I, though it's totally magical. Yeah, and I think, so like to clarify, the th I think the thing that we're saying is what sets the clone apart or what makes it, or the legend swirling around it, this mystical diode is kind of where the, the secret, you know, Lord of the Rings-esque story yeah. lives. And we're saying that, We've activated that diode by turning up um, the drive where it's actually the volume where it's actually clipping the diode. And we, yeah, and it has the forward voltage, and there's also a parameter called slope. How it slopes, it it's to me it's inaudible across a lot of designs. Now, when someone takes a design, let's say a Centaur and like the Voyager is a good example this is a really cool pedal. They use a totally different diode and it, you know, yeah, it feels way different to mm -hmm. me. Um, you is, get into that. Anytime you see a toggle switch, you're typically dealing with a, changing out those diodes and you have a result like, yeah, I'm pretty sure like this toggle on the sacred cow mojo hand is, you know, that's a great mod because it is so drastic. Yeah. Right, right. And another thing I think that's interesting about the Klon is that it it does still have some of that clean in it mixed in, yeah. which I think is something that Until you fully max the gain, there's always clean. So you can okay. get, you know, as you're pulling the gain more and more and more, you're at the same time removing clean. So okay. Okay. it's a really cool blend. That's really cool. Unique. Where in the, I mean, obviously, like Addison said, like their tolerance is different, but like kind of where in the general like vicinity of the the drive does the clean kind of fully go out, and when is it sort of like gain all the way up? Clean is fully out. Okay. Yeah. So, but like anywhere behind, like fully up, there's still there's a little bit. There of is clean. some remnant of clean. Yeah. What well, this is great. This is a KTR clone. That's funny. <laughs> if we go to this camera, it's like. By cool kid. It's really funny. Um, yeah, what do we want to do now? Do we want to play? Uh, Let's. Like what are, what one, are people wanting to hear? Yeah, has anybody put anything in the comments of something that they want to hear? There's been a few. Full disclosure, though, I've been distracted yeah, in the conversation. Fine. Haven't been watching. Um, Let's do some of these cheapos. Yeah, yeah. That I think good. I think that yeah. this is a hot thing right now. Yep. 
So when we get into cheapos, here's the Nux, the Mosky, and let's throw in a K-Line. I like this K-Line brand. Um, there's this, they is have this a, guy right over there, that blue, that blue one. Is that what you're looking for? No. Nope. Yeah, it is. They have a two in one of that. Oh, oh nice. this. That's K line as well. And I've demoed this before. Um, the Joyo. There's a whole episode about these. Um, so let's let's pick one of these. Let's do. I don't see enough demos of like K line. I see a lot of demos of these. I'm just gonna tell you. They. You can find the same sound. This had a different tolerance on the treble pot. It was interesting, but it was there, you know. So let's hook this up. Um, maybe take a question. Or you guys have any other questions? We'll hook this up. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, bro. Okay. Uh, I so correct me if I'm wrong, but like, do you feel like the Klon is probably like the last truly like mm -hmm. original thing that was made? I know it's still kind of based off of like hard clipping circuits. But when you come, like, we just did an episode called, like, Overrated Overdrives or whatever. And you kind of, or under, how to pick an overdrive. I can't remember. It's yeah. like my brain isn't, I can't <laughs> ever remember anything we make. But, like, one of the things that you did was you, you went through overdrive circuits and you were like, soft clipping, yeah. soft clipping, transparent. No, understanding hard, what yeah, overdrive is. And you actually it. made the conscious decision to include the Klon in as, it, as its own style category of overdrive, which kind of makes me feel like, it sort of uh, like earned its place yeah. as a category. I I think that I think the Klon is now the topology of the almost almost a common overdrive topology, which is really interesting historically. The Tube Screamer, you know, we get the full drive from that. We get oh my gosh, there's so many pedals that are Tube Screamers. So I think the Klon has now become the other alternative finally yeah um it's that it's that legendary at this point and i think that that is a really good argument about it's not overhyped it's like an origin of a new species right right and yeah i mean think about the builders who have made a clon uh, i have a list here so wampler um the wampler tumnus let's just go over to the table um we have Keeley did an ox blood, which is a really cool circuit because he didn't replicate the clon with the original schematic. He tried to do it in his own way with his own circuitry. It's really oh, cool, that's cool to take. Way Huge made Conspiracy Theory. I showed Walrus earlier. They've just continued that now. Electroharmonic Soul Food, somewhere over there. Um, and this is most interesting. If we go to this top down, this setting on a boss pedal is called Centaur. Yeah. That says something. Centaur. That's legendary. I think that that's a sign of yeah. it is now in some weird way it almost feels like public domain or something. Right. Like um, like how a tube screamer or like really like any of these topologies that are commonly used and modified yeah. it's like the clon is just sort of yeah. in there. Yeah, I think so. Let's let's go to this K line here. The control so there's the control. Let me dial it, uh, the K line in. It's called the Pegasus. There you go. And I think I think that pedal's Sounds thirty awesome. or forty bucks. Um, all of these are. I would put them in the category of they sound fine. Um, let's let's go for this. How about we start a bass riff? You call the yeah. key. Yeah. Let's we'll spice go it up. A. I like A. A. Let's yeah. do it. Key of A. Yeah. Sweet. Start switching them now.
yeah, again. Sounds well, good. Yeah, let's let's talk about uh I'll briefly fly through this. So uh in February 2019, Bill launched Clon Direct Cells on eBay, and these are current made reissues by him. The last one sold on November 8th for $4,500. And they took a photo of it in a tree? Yeah. You've never done it's that awesome. with your pedals before? I mean, no. this is the new version, same parts, everything, and he's calling it a reissue, but it's identical to the others. Is it gooped? Do you have any idea? Uh, it, is. it is. I believe okay. it is. Dang. Yeah. And he says, I'm Bill Finnegan, the designer of the Klon Overdrive, designer of the professional overdrive unit, um, a builder of every single Centaur from the beginning, 90, 94 until the end of the production period. Now on a small scale, I'm again building a few centaurs. Yeah, he just says, I'm building these as official. Uh, in the intervening years, I occasionally built centaurs and gave them to a close friend so that they could sell them on eBay. I'll still do those. So that That's was going crazy. on. Like it's yeah. basically become it's basically become like this its own form of currency. <laughs> like yeah. people are just collecting them like uh like dragon treasure. Like in Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of this episode. <laughs> hey bro, the ad's over already. <laughs> Let let's talk about the most interesting facet that I, I want to hit. We have about eight minutes if we stretch it ten more. Um yes. guys, I have dinner plans with my wife and some friends. Yeah. It's fine. Clons are more important. That's true. You can eat Centaur. All right. Clon hey. Centaur KTR Users Group on Facebook. I became a member of this months ago when I received a Clon in for service. I was going to repair it for someone, and I realized it was a counterfeit. It, it fooled me over the photography. Dang. The guy sent me photos. Yeah, I can fix that up. I know what's wrong with it. I can do this. I got it in. I even held it in my hands and with the forms and put it in a bin, had it at home, went and opened it and I just I had the moment where I was like it's off Your I felt sense. I felt like a like a museum curator that was mm. like this sculpture is not accurate you know <laughs> it was like I just could feel it and so basically on this uh forum we've been helping people with this issue of counterfeits it's wow. a massive issue so if you look at the right here that's the counterfeit. Notice the kerning is off. That's something that freaked me out. I saw the kerning. <laughs> that was well, the first thing I saw. The when first thing I today. noticed when yeah, I, yeah. I opened the back and then I looked at it again on the outside. I went, kerning's off. Something's wrong. Bill is meticulous. Wow. Um, then I noticed the goop was not shiny. But look the detail. They forged his. They they have his numbers down really well. Wow. The handwriting. I've I've analyzed his handwriting across mine. So this, these are real ones. I did a photo session that I use in this forum to help people. Wow. And <laughs> it's That's super so nerdy. so crazy. Um, here's a guy. You know, I'm getting worried. My gold clown is a fake. And it turned out this was a fake. Uh, this guy bought a couple, and they were fakes. Wow. So we're tr notice that goop is just, you can just tell. It doesn't feel right. There's things with the pots. There's things with the circuit board. I even did photos about how the enclosures, there's issues with the cast. Wow. That's the board. You can tell it's soldered horribly. There's just like problems. So these are being counterfeited. A lot of them I see are coming from Human Gear in Japan, a brand, uh, are coming through that store. And then you can get on um, Amazon and buy an enclosure. Whoa. 84 on bucks. On Amazon? Um, you can buy kits like this. You can buy the screws. This is an Amazon full kit with the with the proper color feet, the proper knobs, Whoa. no printing. So this is That's so crazy. This is the first time a pedal. We have clones and replicas. This is counterfeiting, like you do a Van Gogh. Right, right. This is a different there thing are, for pedals. There are literally like professional like art counterfeiters that like mix the like egg yolk together in the right way to like because you sound like you do that like I, i'm not saying i don't i'm just saying i'm what i am saying is whoever's doing this you should stop because it sucks you just I, compared a pedal to a van gogh painting. i'm saying that because because this has never happened yeah. and on the these people on this forum i encourage you if you're you need to be really careful if you're buying yeah. one of these for investments. It's a yeah, great yeah, investment. Yeah. It's an awesome piece of gear if you have the money. But like 
people are getting ripped off left and right. Yeah. I'm going to work on some documentation, probably do a video on like how to not get scammed on this issue. And there's a lot of knowledgeable people on here. But we haven't had a pedal in such demand and high prices, $5,000 right. listings. Right. We can. We now have a counterfeit market right. for a pedal. Yeah. It's not a clone market. Yeah, yeah. It is a market to trick people into thinking they are owning yeah. a real deal Klon Centaur. Yeah. I think that, like, just to clarify, it it's not an issue about cloning. It's an issue that people are trying to make them look like originals and selling them for way too much money. Like, cloning, there's tons of clones. The fact that people are, like, buying these for thousands of dollars and they're not real, that's a problem. And yeah. It's not cool. It's crazy. It's absolutely maddening, and just, I think I think that point clean. is really important for people yeah. to understand. Like, if you're going to invest in this, be slightly afraid. Slightly yeah, be afraid. very very careful. What you seeing on the thread there, Allison? Yeah, I got a question. What's up with John Mayer's black clone, Josh Scott? It, I will respect his privacy. I get asked this all the time. It is not this. It's not a Centura the replica company. This is a replica that doesn't try to, this is it's a clone. very clearly. This a is clone. not a counter. Like it says, you know, Syria tone amps. It's not this. That's all I'll say. Good enough. And just remember he's John Mayer. He can have the real thing. Lots of, uh, lots of ask about, uh, gooping. One in particular was, yeah. uh, does gooping affect, uh, part tolerances at all in any way? And no. why did he goop? The um, any he idea? gooped, to hide the circuit because he worked on it for four and a half years. Got it. And I think he's a genius of, of building a mysterious, interesting product. I think that the pedal, when he talked to me, he talked about how, how he put the LED on the left, the foot switch on the right, when you're standing mm -hmm. at a mic stand. Like, he thought everything wow. out. That's he so thought everything out. And there's no, there's nothing in him that's like, oh, they're going to goop it today. It yeah. was like... There's a pointed yeah. effort. There. Do you think if it wasn't gooped, it would be have gotten as much hype? Like, do you think if he hadn't have ever gooped it, like, do you think that there's an aspect to the years of it being so mysterious that that added to? I think it. I don't think it'd be as popular. I think the mystery because we have just spent probably 20 minutes of today explaining you can make it. Yeah. There's not a lot of things. I mean. The same people on their supercomputer phone, which defies rules that 10, 15, 20 years ago, we were like, it's impossible to yeah, put that yeah, process. Yeah. Like, they're saying you can't take a diode from turn of the century kind of tech right. and replicate it. I mean, yeah. it has a so, tri like, it's, it's not, I don't want to use like terms like brainwashed, but it's like, we're so like, this is magic. And we right. want it to be magic, but it's an analog overdrive circuit. Yeah. Simple as wow. that. Wow. Should we play a digital version and then get Definitely. out of here? Definitely. We should yeah. do that. Yeah, sounds good. Let's Absolutely. do that. Well, is it overhyped? We're going to close on this. I'm going to shoot out the DD200 here. If we look down, it'll be a fully uh, kind of, this is boss's take. It's an analog signal path in here, I believe, with some digital stuff. And then a three-band EQ. So this is like as far from trying to be like, hey, this is a clone clone, but it has a clon sound, centaur sound. So we'll play that. But is the clone overhyped? In the comments, is the clon overhyped? Yes or no? Feel free to expound. I'd love to read all of those. So Rhett, do that now while we jam. What about you guys? Rhett Schultz says yes. Rhett. I agree with Rhett. Rhett. I disagree. I Okay, I think the clon itself, number one, I wanted to say this the whole time, it's a beautiful pedal. The, it's gorgeous. The enclosure, I think it honestly might be one of my favorite looking pedals ever. I wrote a, a whole section in the Stompbox book hey. where I covered Whoa. the... Uh, the art of pedals through the decades in the centaur has a feat. I did a feature on like, it's it's amazing the look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the the pedal a clon a clon itself is overhyped, but I don't think the clon circuit is overhyped at all. I, I think it does a special yeah. thing. So there's my that's the circuit my is answer. worthy of a lot of love. Hundred percent, absolutely. Is it worthy of five thousand mm, dollars? Well, right. clearly not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm him. sitting here owning a bunch of them. I didn't pay that. Yeah. But I'm a collector. Like, I curate. I, I tell them what, I curate stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, 
I think it's like I feel like I agree, but like in different w- yeah, words. Yeah. Like yep, sure. I think it's I think it's overhyped just in the amount that it's like fussed over. Like it's fussed over too much, and I I think like like anything, it's like a tool, and it sounds awesome. Like I said, like I think it might be the drive sound like yeah, I've been yeah. looking for. Yep. Um, and I think like the the design of it is brilliant. I think like we do it a disservice by not talking about why it is actually a good circuit. It's like, it really, I mean, we don't even call it the right thing. It's true. We call it the Klon. It's called, it's a centaur. He was supposedly going to make a second pedal and he bailed on it. He showed it in a dam, but he never did. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just has, it has a lot of hype around it to the point where we don't even call it the right thing. Wow. So if we look here, here's the red control. We'll come out of eight. We'll do like a, the E bluesy funky thing. Cool. Let me get this lined up. Again, this is a boss pedal, everybody. Dang. It's, I'm not going to waste time because we all need to go home to our families. Let's jam on this. It's pretty close. Uh, let's go. Um. Your drums still sound good with the room mic on. There we go. I hope this was insightful. Um, it's a lot of info. We have a lot of stuff planned for the Klon Centaur on the channel, but this gives us a grid for what you want to know. In the comments, it's a big deal. Get engaged in there. Let us know more questions. We're going to continue to offer and try to help through uh, these crazy times of $5,000 pedals. Don't buy a counterfeit. Go to that Facebook group. Um and be a part of that. Yeah, there's a lot I could say. Also, check out the Patreon. If you love stuff like this, go check that out. It helps support the show, the staff that we have to do the show, which is very separate from the pedal company. Also, travel, research, interviews. There's all kinds of expenses. Then we have the JHSshow.com. You can go look at every episode ever. There's record time. There's shirts. Tons of stuff. Any final words from anyone here? I feel like we've said all that can be said for today. Real, real quick. Yeah. This clan is mythical and legendary. What's the next clan? Any I was, ideas? I was asked mm. this the other day in Were an you? interview. All I right. have no... I wish I knew. We just leave that one hanging. Just comment below. Comment in the comments. If you're watching this afterwards, it, what do you think the next clan is? I think it's probably a JHS pedal. Hey. Probably. <laughs> not shame not to plug. Toot What's our, our worst horn? selling pedal? It's probably that. Yeah. I don't know. This was good. This was great. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of the show. Have a great day. Bye.